Hey Casey, it's Leslie here. I am so excited to be back at um, this uh, critique with you guys. I hope you guys had a wonderful Thanksgiving and had a nice little break and we're ready to jump back into it with pricing, which is a huge, 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 huge issue. And and I'll be honest with you, it's an issue that I struggled with for a long time um, and I still sort of change my pricing. I listen to what my clients say and change it up. I'm always trying to um, you know, improve that. Um, the bottom line with pricing is you've got to charge enough for your time, period. Um, and um, instead of, I know when I first started, I just kind of randomly looked at a bunch of different photographers and I was like, oh, well, they're charging this, I should charge this. There was no thought process to why they were charging that or if they even knew what they were talking about. Um, and not that I necessarily copied it exactly, but I was just like, okay, this is the going rate for this and so I should charge this. Um, but that's not the way to approach pricing. To, to approach pricing in the right way to make a business out of it, you've got to figure out every single thing that goes into an, a session and time it out and figure out how much you can make, you know, how much money you want to make per hour. Um, and that's really kind of the way to go for pricing. Um, so I don't know how much time you spend on each thing, and I'm talking every little thing, phone calls, emails, follow-up, planning the session, location scouting, editing, um, packaging, sneak peeks, blog posts, Facebook, um, any and everything, placing orders, whatever, burning CDs, all of that stuff is time for one session and make a list of that and uh, maybe make an approximate time for each and then add it all up and figure out how many hours you spend on one session and then figure, then look at how much you charge for that session and see if it's enough for you, if you feel like it's worth it. Um, because, I mean, let's face it, we're all here to make some money. Um, okay, so right off the bat, not knowing how much time you spend and just simply looking at your pricing, I think I could give you a more educated um, suggestion if I knew the times that you spent, but um, just looking at your session, um, I mean, I already think that your session fee could go up a little bit. Um, I mean, I charge 150, so that's not that much more than what you charge. Um, but, uh, you know, if you're doing um, one to two hours, uh, you're doing all that pre-session talking and, you know, whatever, uh, following up and emailing and sending pricing guides and all that stuff, you need to consider that as well. And maybe, you know, up that a little bit, I think. Um, I think uh, adding uh, to the unlimited clothing changes, um, I would put in parentheses as time allows so that they don't get to a session and be like, well, you said I could change 20 times. Um, I think that, and, and so they don't have their heart set on, you know, way more outfits than you could physically fit in. I would put that in parentheses. I would put um, as time allows. Um, I don't really like saying a certain amount of, um, like a number outfit changes because then if for some reason you don't get to that many number, then you're kind of like, the client's like, well, wait a minute, you said three, you know what I mean? Um, so I think unlimited clothing changes is fine, but just put in parentheses as time allows. That way you're not held to a certain number that was in the client's head. Um, one to two locations is standard. Um, and the number of edited images is standard. Um, okay, so you mentioned up above that you don't do in-person ordering and you're not sure how to get people to want to do that. Um, it's all in how you present that. Um, you don't offer it because, yeah, they will say, oh, I don't have time for that. You have to just say that now I'm doing in-person ordering because it allows me to give you the education and, a, you know, answers to um, questions that, you know, may come up. I'm able to help you narrow down your choices. I'm a able to, you know, um, offer suggestions and, and all this stuff that you can't get when you're just looking at them online. Um, so th I would just make it not an option. It's just part of it. So I would even put underneath here, um, complimentary or in-person ordering session to view 30 to 50 edited images, period, and not make it an option. Um, and eventually, you know, they will start to get it. It's just, like I say, all in how you do it. If you just say, oh, I offer, da-da-da-da, then they have the chance to say no. 
Um, and when I switched to in-person ordering, that's exactly what happened. I, I said it in the wrong way, and I had people being like, no, can't you just put it online? And honestly, online, they take their time. They're, they're lollygagging about it. They look at it. They don't like it. They look at it again. They like this one. They look at it too much. They don't like this one. You know, all of that stuff that happens with the online. And I've, I'll be honest with you, when I first heard about the in-person ordering at WPPI, I was like, there's no way that's going to make that much difference. I don't really want to, I don't have time for that, you know, whatever. It's just so much easier to do the online. Um, so I didn't believe it, but I said, yeah, let me just try it as a theory. And sure enough, I made more the very first time. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say I made $1,000 or $1,200 or $1,500 that first time. I didn't. I maybe only made a couple hundred more than what I typically made, but it was still more. And I could still see the reaction. And that boosts your confidence like in nobody's business. I mean, you know, they always say they like their photos after looking at it in an online gallery, and that feels good. But when you're sitting there and you're watching them, um, you know, look through these images and their reaction on their face and their, um, you know, all of that good stuff, it really is great to see. And it makes you know that, you know, the reason you're doing this and uh, um, it makes you know that you're doing a good job. So I, I would strongly suggest doing in-person ordering. And it really does not take um, a whole lot of special equipment or anything like that. I mean, the very first time I did an in-person ordering session, I simply put their photos in Bridge on my Mac laptop and scrolled through them. It was not fancy. Um, since then, I have changed and gone to showing a slideshow. Um, first with music because it evokes some um, emotion, which is always good. You can use Animoto. You can use, I don't know if you use a Mac, but you can use iPhoto to do a slideshow. It can be very simple. It doesn't have to be fancy. Um, but that right there um, is golden. So you start the session off like that. Okay, and then you can go buy Apple TV for $99 um, and hook it to your television in your living room and it reads off of your computer um, and so you can show them their photos on your um, television and their slideshow on your television as opposed to um, just doing it on your computer. Um, so that's a very inexpensive way to make a big impact. So that's another thing you can do um, when it comes to important person ordering sessions. You can also send them the night before um, a list of, you know, who they have to get gifts for. So they come into the order session prepared. Um, a great little marketing piece that you can, you know, send. Say, hey, you know, can't wait for our ordering session tomorrow. Here's a um, gift uh, list in case you need to jot down some names of um, people you might need to buy gifts for so you can be prepared for the ordering session. Now, when you do the ordering session, you definitely say your order must be placed during this ordering session, period, nothing, no other option. So you need to say that. Also, another thing you can do is during the session, before they leave, you can set up that ordering session right then and there. Have, um, print out some cards that, um, that, you know, are like sort of like appointment cards, like you get at the hair salon, something similar to that. And um, at the end of the session, you know, when you're saying goodbye and, oh, I can't wait to edit these photos, let's go ahead and set up your ordering session and get your calendar out on your phone. They, I'm sure, have a calendar on their phone. And you can say, okay, two weeks from now, let's set it up for this day, this time. Write it on that card, hand it to them. Done. Then that way you're done. You don't give them an option. So that's another thing you can do. Um, okay, so back to pricing. Um, professional conference. Um, you know, there's different theories on the whole print minimum thing. Um, a lot of times if they see it, that's how much they're going to spend. So I don't actually have it on mine anymore. I used to have a $200 print minimum. Um, and I just don't have it anymore. And I was worried by taking it off, somebody would buy just one image. And I'm not going to lie, I've had one person do that, but it was one person. And while I was mad about it, I was like, okay, it's just one person. Most people 
don't do that because if they're spending enough money on a session, they're going to buy some photos. Um, so I don't know. I might would take that off or at least move it way down at the bottom and make it smaller, um, like a fine print kind of thing. I would not, I mean, immediately when I see 175 as a client, I'm like, okay, I've got to spend 175 plus hundred dollars. It's 275. Okay, great. Done. Um, so, you know, it's all about, um, how you can, um, sort of, play into a shopper's mentality, really. And like I say, when I see that number, that's what I'm thinking of. Um, now, the edited images for $200, that's probably way too little um, for your images. Um, and I know that there's a lot of people out there struggling with this, and I was struggling. I mean, I used to sell my CD for $150. And that's insane when I think about it, because it's like, okay, they're getting 30 to 50 images. Okay, let's say they're getting 50. 200 divided by 50. They're only paying $4 per image. And you know that you are worth more than $4 per image. So you've got to increase that. I would say you've got to at least charge $10 an image. And even that is way too low. But I would change that immediately. Um, because, you know, it's like... Um, the best way I can explain it is it's like a sitcom, an old sitcom, that the actors got paid for their time to make that sitcom, and it ran, and everything was great. Well, then it ran for 20 more years in reruns, and those actors didn't get any residual payments from it, but yet their face was on television for 20 more years every day. Um, and sooner or later, they figured it out. They started working that into their contract because it's like, dude, I did all this work and you're getting all the benefits from it. So the same thing with CD. You have got to make sure that you charge enough that if they decide to print one image 500 times, you got paid for that. Otherwise, they are getting something for nothing. And I know that your work is is um, worth more than this. So I would I would definitely up that CD charge. Um, and honestly, I don't know that I would even have this set up this way. I think I would have this page just be all about your basic session, period. Basic session, $150. What comes in the basic session um, that prints prints, digital, and other products are sold separately. Um, and then if you want to keep this um, discount on there, fine. But take these two things off um, this page totally. Um, you don't want them coming into you and thinking they, they can get out of here with $300, period. Because otherwise, you're never going to sell more. Um, and if you want to start selling more, um, you, you basically, you're cutting yourself in the foot right now. I mean, you're cutting off your legs here because they see that they can get out of here for $275 or $300, period, done, they're done. You're not going to be able to sell them anything else, and you're never going to be able to make any more money than that. Um, so I would take that off immediately um, and just have this all about the session and just, you know, elaborate what the session is and what they get and how great it is and all that stuff. And then I would have your a la carte, which is fine. Um, having all of these gift prints be the same price is good. However, this could be at least 30 bucks. Um, wall prints, all of these prices need to go up, especially if you're mounting with Serene here. Um, figure out how much um, how much that costs you for an 11 by 14. I don't know what lab you use, but um, figure out the cost of the 11 by 14, the cost of the Serene, the cost of shipping if there is any, the time it took you to order it, um, the time it takes you to package it, all of that stuff and figure out how much that is, and then at least double it or triple it. And that's just a guide. That's not a. That's not an absolute. That's just my suggestion. Um, you can do even more than that, but I think as a starting point, um, do that. And I promise you it's probably more than 30 bucks. I would say your 11 by 14 needs to be upwards of $50. This needs to be at least 100 you know, over $100 here. Um, the standout needs to be way more because I know it costs more. Um, you just need a bigger profit margin. That's just all there is to it. So I would up these prices. You know, if you want to just go ahead and up them and just say new pricing in effect January 1st, clean cut, start the new year, I think that's great. Um, so you could do that. So all the cart pricing. Okay. Um, and another thing is, is, are these the only sizes you're offering? Because they come in a lot more sizes. So I'm curious as to why you're not listing more sizes or at least saying down at the bottom, 
more sizes available. I mean, you need to have on there. If you're going to sell a print, you're going to make a little bit more money on a larger print and you're going to make more impact with a larger print. So having that not on there is just telling them that it's not available. So I would at least have a couple more sizes on there, 20 by 24. Um, you know, I, in fact, the 16 by 20 and the 16 by 24, there's not that much difference between the two. I'd have those on the same line as the same price. Because, I mean, they're not that much different. And then I'd have a 20 by 24 and then maybe even one more large size. And then at the bottom, say, um, even larger sizes are available. Ask for details, that kind of thing. Um, okay. Yeah, basically all of your items need to be priced um, more. And like I say, the best way to do that is to figure out your cost, everything involved in your cost. And if you want to send that to me, do it. And then I'll let you know what I think you should charge. Um, so, okay. Let's see a size. Okay, I do see that you have that here. Okay. So this is exactly what I was saying. I just hadn't gotten down here, but I would go even bigger than 16 by 20. You don't need to limit yourself to 16 by 20 because 16 by 20 is not really that huge. I just sold a 20 by 24 the other day. And um, in fact, I sold her three. Um, so, you know, depending on their wall space and all that good stuff, but I would let them know that's an option. And I would definitely, when you're in your in-person ordering session, you know, have samples of everything. You cannot sell what you cannot see. And I have learned that the hard way. Um, I did not have samples of everything for a long time. And so, of course, I didn't sell it. But like I said the other day, I sold a 20 by 24, three of them, because I had... 20 by 24 with me and I went to the girl's house and she had this humongous wall and I was like oh my god you need three 20 by 24 so she got one in the middle of both of her girls together and then one of each girl on the sides beautiful um so you've got just you need a sample of a mounted print you need a sample of a float wrap probably a middle size so they can see it or either the large size because I think the larger size makes more impact so I would probably do the biggest size you can do in these a sample so you need a sample of a float wrap you need a sample of a mounted print you need a sample of a canvas you need a sample of a standout you need a sample of a wall print you need a sample of a gift print um I don't have four by sixes on mine because to me I just I don't like them I want to make a bigger impact but um, as long as you have it all priced the same then I think that's fine because I think if they're priced the same then you can always get them to do a five by seven because they're getting the same price um, but I would at least push the five by sevens um, another thing is you've got quite a lot of um, items as choices so which is great but again you've got to be able to as the professional photographer figure out um, the best items. Um, I think a lot of times as photographers, we love all the cool stuff we see at our labs, but the customers don't always need that many choices. So whatever you think sells the best and is the best for your specific type of client um, is what you need to be offering. That may be all of these things, but it may not be. Um, like, uh, you know, there's not much difference between a float wrap and a standout, probably, and a canvas. They're all kind of all the same. I mean, I know a float wrap is not as thick on the sides and all the different stuff. So, I don't know. You may you may keep all these things. I'm just saying look at them and say, have I ever sold any of these? What do my clients like the best? My clients, personally, are canvas is the best. Um, I think that clients sometimes less is more when it comes to different products but as long as you have a sample of each and you're able to show them the difference of each then I think you're good um, so okay so your homework for tonight is to um, or before next week is to make a list of all the things that go into a session from start to finish and put some approximate times on there and send it to me um, and then we'll figure out how much time you're spending and go from there about actual quantities. Um, some things to change is take these things off, um, uh, keep, you know, at, adjust your print prices, but again, not until we figure out how much each of them cost. Um, and then, you know, maybe add some packages would be something that I see is missing. And the packages could be where the digital stuff comes in. You can do a couple of different things. You can do um, packages that are simply just prints. You can do packages that are prints and digital. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, but the top package to me should always have 
um, all of the digital images and should be the most expensive because that is what they can then take and do all kinds of stuff with. So my personal uh, philosophy is having maybe three um, collections. And that's not, I mean, a lot of people do that. So it's not like Leslie Kerrigan thought of this. Um, <laughs> but anyway, three collections. I would have the bottom collection be very bare bones, basic gift prints, maybe one wall print, period. You don't really want people buying that low package, but you just have it there so you know, you know you're going to make a certain amount of money. Have that package be at least your in-your-mind minimum, if not more. Um, so I would have that. Um, your middle package could be something like maybe 10 of the digital images and a canvas or a wall print and some gift prints. Maybe that's something you want to do or maybe no digitals and just like a wall print, a canvas, some gift prints, that kind of thing. Um, have it be, you know, the middle where most people get this, like the most popular and then have your top collection be the one that you want to sell, it has the digital images in it. Um, maybe a wall print with the digital images, um, maybe a special, you know, you could always offer one of those image boxes, um, with like five by seven of all the images and the CD. I don't know, just, you know, whatever, but make that be your top, top package. Um, and that's where the digital prints would come in. Um, I think those are good options, um. So I would add some collections, and then, like I say, I would make sure these these prices, these a la carte prices, are way more than they currently are. Therefore, the collections start looking like a really great deal. Um, you know, so um, like in other words, to buy the same gift print a la carte would be more than if the gift print is in one of your collections. Um, so think about whether you want to do digital and prints, or if you want to just do digital or how you want to do it, but then I would come up with some collections. Um, so anyway, I hope this helps, and if you have any questions, please let me know. And like I say, if you wouldn't mind jotting down the the times for each thing and getting it to me, I think that would be awesome. Um, so thanks so much. I hope you have a great week.